Good morning. My name is Sanjeev Arora, and I represent the ECHO Project and the University of New Mexico Health Science Center in Albuquerque. Our vision of the ECHO team is to improve healthcare for underserved populations all over the world and to do it fast. Project ECHO started 10 years ago to tackle one disease. It's called hepatitis C. It affects 170 million people worldwide. Today, only 2% of them have been treated. It is expected that 20 million people in the world will die from hepatitis C if current rates of treatment continue. In New Mexico, there are 35,000 patients with hepatitis C. In 2004, less than 5% of them had been treated. There were 2,300 prisoners who had this disease, and none had been treated. We have twice the number of deaths from chronic liver disease in New Mexico than any other state in the country. I'm a liver disease specialist. I work at the university hospital here, and patients were trying to come to see me. I treat hepatitis C there. There was an eight-month wait to see me. People were traveling hundreds of miles. So if there was a patient in Silver City, they would travel 250 miles to see me. And if I was treating hepatitis C for them, they would have to make 12 to 18 trips to get one course of treatment. So you can imagine, if you were poor, that was very, very difficult to get that treatment. The good news is that the treatment is highly effective. We can cure 70% of them. So I would told you when there was an eight-month wait to see me, patients were coming in. They were dying of liver cancers and end-stage liver disease. And it was a frightening thought to know that if only we had treated them earlier, we could have saved their life. So it was curable. But the problem was that the treatment requires weekly injections of a medicine called interferon. It requires chemotherapy-like pills. It's very toxic. And as a result, not a single primary care clinician in New Mexico was treating hepatitis C. So we developed Project ECHO with one primary goal. We said we would develop the capacity to treat hepatitis C everywhere in New Mexico. And the second goal was we knew if we could treat something complicated like hepatitis C and deliver chemotherapy to patients in rural areas, we would have a model that could treat all kinds of complex diseases in developing countries and rural areas, etc. ECHO model is based on four key ideas. The first is to use technology. This technology is commonly available. It's video conferencing and broadband internet. What do we use this for is to leverage scarce specialty resources that may exist only in a major hospital, like an academic medical center. So in this case, it was a liver specialist, a pharmacologist, and a psychiatrist. The second key idea in Project ECHO is a disease management model. This is based on the work of a businessman called Edward Deming, who essentially said that if you want to improve quality, you want to reduce variation, and you want to standardize across best practice. So what we did was we set up 21 centers of excellence for treating hepatitis C in New Mexico, five in the prison, 16 in rural community centers, federally qualified health centers. Each of these centers of excellence was run by a primary care provider, like a nurse practitioner or a primary care physician. We created one best practice protocol for treating hepatitis C and shared it with everybody. The next challenge was, how are we going to take a primary care doctor who has never treated hepatitis C, who hasn't done a liver disease fellowship, how are we going to make them as expert, as a super specialist at the, at the academic medical center? So we asked ourselves, how did I become a super specialist? The way I did that was through a process called case-based learning. That's what I did during my residency, my fellowship, where I managed complex patients under the supervision of the professors in my medical school. 
through this model of guided practice, I became an expert. And we said we would do the same by co-managing patients with our rural clinicians. Lastly, we would use the internet to have a database, an electronic record of a, of a sort, to track patient outcomes so we would know how these patients in rural areas are doing. This is what a Project ECHO clinic looks like. This is not telemedicine where we take care of patients. These are primary care clinicians here on the side. In the large box is University of New Mexico, where there's a liver specialist, a psychiatrist, pharmacologist sitting. And at the top right is Deb Newman. She's presenting one or two patients of hepatitis C to our team, and we help her manage the patients. Then we'll go to the bottom right, which is Las Vegas, where Chris Rugi, a nurse practitioner, is presenting a patient to us. Over the course of about two hours, we will co-manage about 12 patients of hepatitis C. We'll also give them a brief didactic presentation on some aspect of hepatitis C that we think we would like to, them to become experts on. What we find is, as we do this, these primary care providers become experts very quickly. They become experts because they learn from their own patients. They present one or two, but they learn on 12 every week. They learn from each other. They learn from our short presentations, but mostly they learn by doing. It's like if you wanted to teach your daughter to drive a car, you wouldn't just give her a manual and say, okay, now go do it. You're going to do what we do. You're going to do guided practice. You're going to mentor her through this process. So what are the benefits to rural providers here? They get no cost continuing medical education credits. We've given them 57,000 hours of credits. This is what they need for their licenses. They get access to multiple specialists. They get enhanced self-efficacy. And to our surprise, this dramatically improves their professional satisfaction. They like to interact with university professors and, and other clinicians. The most important thing is, can they do it as well? We did a clinical trial and published it in, in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2011, which showed that the results that these primary care doctors could get were as good as the university hepatitis C clinic. It, it was actually better than most of the reported trials when specialists treat hepatitis C. Thank you. Thank you. What we found was when a patient is treated close to their home in a culturally appropriate setting by a primary care doctor whom they know and trust when they don't have to travel hundreds of miles to actually be seen, they get better care, better adherence. They trust these doctors. So our conclusion was that this was as safe and effective as if you came to the university. After hepatitis C was, was successful, we described six criteria. We said if the disease was common, if the management was complex, new treatments are coming, there is a high social impact. If there are new treatments coming and they're effective, and if you don't treat this disease, bad things happen, then this would be an ideal disease for Project ECHO to, to be applied. We've now done ECHO for many diseases like hepatitis C, diabetes, HIV, substance use disorders, chronic pain, and others. The principal goal of Project ECHO right now is force multiplication. This is a term we borrowed from the defense industry and redefined it in healthcare as a logarithmic improvement in capacity to deliver, to deliver best practice care for underserved populations. That means 10 times or more. Uh, we need that in developing countries, in rural parts of the United States. We don't just train doctors or nurses practitioners because chronic disease management is a team sport. We train community health workers. We've trained 150 community health worker diabetes specialists, 100 community health worker addiction specialists. We've, we've trained nurses. We have a community health worker program in the prison run by Dr. Carla Thornton. And she has trained 250 community health workers in prison, who in turn have trained 5,000 prisoners on hepatitis C prevention, HIV, sexually transmitted diseases, which are very common in the prison system. And she uses the same video conferencing technology that we use, where she connects these prisons by video once a month to teach them more and more, teach our teachers more and more. We started ECHO. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
We started ECHO in New Mexico. These are all the places in New Mexico where we do hepatitis C education or treatment. These are all the places in New Mexico. We have 400 points of contact for all different diseases. And the idea is, if you have Carlsbad, we want at least one primary care provider who can do hepatitis C, one rheumatology, one HIV, one etc., so that they can create self-sustaining networks. Patients don't have to travel hundreds of miles to see a specialist. Now, many parts, many parts of the country have replicated Project ECHO. We have 32 hubs like the University of New Mexico all over the country, Harvard, University of Chicago, University of Washington, Nevada, Utah, South Florida. We have 11 hubs in the VA system connected to 400 clinics, and we have a worldwide collaboration with the Department of Defense for management of chronic pain all over the world. What are the benefits to the ECHO model? The reason why ECHO model works is it fundamentally changes the model for specialty care. What we want to do is we want to demonopolize knowledge. Typically, knowledge is trapped in the head of a super, super specialist like me. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And we want to share it freely with our primary care provider colleagues. We want to improve access to quality health care, reduce disparities, workforce training, force multiplication, and provide more cost-effective care. Just to give you an idea, a VA system, like the Albuquerque VA system, spends $8 million just transporting patients back and forth for specialty care. Our vision for the future is to improve health care for underserved populations all over the world. And our strategy is to use academic medical centers in every country to serve as hubs for force multiplication and demonopolizing knowledge. And thank you for your attention.